What Were the Twin Towers? Chapter 4. Crews first laid a concrete base for 47 columns that would support the elevators in each tower. The elevator area formed the center or core for each building. The core also had space for utility areas, restrooms, and three staircases. Another 236 columns would support the outside walls of each building. Once all of the columns were put in place, constructing the steel structure of the buildings began. By the spring of 1969, steel was in place for the North Tower core up to the ninth floor. Yamasaki designed the two towers without columns breaking up floor space inside. This was very different from older skyscrapers. Every floor in the towers was an acre in size. A huge open area went from the elevators to the outside walls. Tenants could design office spaces any way they wanted. The outside walls were load-bearing. This meant the walls helped hold up the building. Each wall unit was made of steel panels that weighed 22 tons. The elevator core and outside walls were built at the same time. After the walls went up, the floors were put in. Then electricians, carpenters, and plumbers began their work. The Port Authority knew that erecting two 110-story buildings was an incredible challenge. For the World Trade Center towers, a new kind of crane was used. It came from Australia and was nicknamed the kangaroo crane. It made the job easier and faster. Before this, smaller skyscrapers were built with either derricks or crawling cranes. The crawling cranes had worked in front of the construction site, lifting up materials to workers. The cranes, however, were dangerous. Sometimes they collapsed. Also, they could lift loads, loads only as high as the length of the crane's arm. Derricks were built onto a landing of a building and lifted material up only as far as the next floor. Once that floor was finished, the derrick had to be taken apart and moved up. The whole process took a day and a half and was very tricky. Kangaroo cranes had a 120-foot tower that ended in an operator's cabin with an arm stretching out over the edge of the building. The hopping came from jacks under the cabin that lifted it up as far as 25 feet at a time. The crane could lift three floors worth of steel. Ooh, can you see that in the picture? Once new tower sections were bolted into place, the crane hopped another 25 feet, or 20 feet. And one more time. The process was much quicker than taking a derrick apart and moving it. Once the building was finished, the kangaroo ca crane lifted a smaller crane to the roof. Then workmen took the kangaroo crane apart and the pieces were lowered to the street. The final step in construction was attaching a stylish aluminum skin to the outside of the building. This skin is called a curtain wall. It keeps cold or warm air inside the building and bad weather outside. As for windows, the trade centers were bronze tinted glass, only 22 inches wide. Each window was set 10 inches deep into the building. This made for a more interesting look than just a plain flat surface. Together, the Twin Towers had 43,600 windows. Of course, the bigger a building is, the more people can work there. But more people mean more elevators and elevators take up lots of space. How could the Trade Center elevators handle the 150,000 workers and visitors expected to come and go each day? A Port Authority architect came up with a smart plan. Each tower was divided into three zones. Zone one went up to the 44th floor. Zone two went up from the 44th floor to the 78th floor. Zone three went from the 78th floor to the 110th. Let's see the picture they show all the different, I'm trying to figure out how to get up there. Each zone had elevators that only served its floors, but there were also going to be express elevators. Some went from the lobby to either the 44th floor or the 78th floor and a couple went straight to the 110th floor. So if someone worked on the 66th floor, 
she could take the express elevator to the 44th floor, then a local elevator to the 66th floor. The zone plan allowed elevator cars serving different zones to use the same elevator shaft. This cut down on space. The final plan for each tower calls for 23 express elevators, 72 locals, and nine freight elevators. The freight elevators also served basements, which had six levels. That was a total of 116 floors.